I find it very interesting that the New York Post today is reporting that the the Big Ten and the SEC are threatening the Big 12 with getting Pac-12 by the Big Ten and the SEC if they get, I don't know, if their egos get too big, if their asks are too much in an expanded college football playoff. This, this is what we all worry about. An inflated, overrated Big Ten all of a sudden has a position at the head of the college football table, while at the other end, you have the SEC controlling their stake in the college football playoff. This is a problem because I got to be honest with you. I think this shows that the Big Ten and the SEC are intimidated by the Big 12 and that they understand that Brett Yormark has taken an opportunity here in expansion and seized control and seized influence, Jake. I think this is actually not a shot over the bow, but I think this is a tip of the cap to the Big 12. Yeah, and I think it's classic, you know, uh, bully tactics. I mean, I, I think we see this all the time. Uh, in our world, you know, whether it's in sports or other areas, like I, I, I think the the big boys want to continue to be the big boys, and in whether it's the Omni Hotel, whether it's you you trying to say that we're going to pack twelve you if you get in the way of us controlling uh, the college football playoff, like what is this third grade recess? Are you taking my lunch money? Like, like come on, dude! Like this isn't this is it's just not where we are in this conversation, and I think. The Big 12, frankly, at this point after expansion, has a decision to make about how they want to go about this. And I, and I really do believe it will decide the fate of college football, meaning, okay, if we're going to play offense and we're going to continue to hunt the Big 10 and the SEC, you better know that the Big 10 and the SEC are going to clap back in some form or fashion. They are going to come after you. The only question is going to be, who is, who is the conference that is ultimately going to have real control, right? Who's ultimately going to really have the hammer to say, no, you want to say F me? No, you can go out to pasture. You, your conference can die because if I'm going to doubt someone, I can assure you it's not going to be Brett Yormark. I can assure you that after the performance they put on in realignment in this wave, I'm not doubting them. And, and frankly, the SEC is the one who, who, while yes, they're expanding with Texas and Oklahoma, that feels like a, a nice little dip your toe in the water move compared to what the Big Ten and the Big 12 have done here. And so to me, you know, yeah, it doesn't surprise me the SEC would, would try to take that position. And, and the other thing I would point out is that the Big 12 tends to move in silence. The Big 12 tends to be the conference that, you know, doesn't say a whole lot unless there's obvious media availability as part of like your basketball tournament or a football championship game or whatever. Right, you don't really hear Brett doing a ton of media. Yeah, he went on, you know, Marshan and Oran. Like, yeah, he does here and there, but it's not really much. And that conference gets things done at a high rate. So, so when I see, you know, the New York Post tokening a term Pac-12, yeah, and that's the shocking. It was the New yeah. York Post. Yeah, and we've heard this a little bit before. Like, this is this term is not like a hundred percent new. You but, keep running your mouth. You're gonna get Pac-12, bro. Pac Ten. Yeah, p Pac-10 and stuff. Pac-X. I'm you. coming over there to Pac-X your ass. Um, like, what is it? What What does that even mean? If you're the Big Ten and I'm gonna Pac-12 you, bro. What does that even mean? Does that mean you're gonna like I'm a bunch? Drop of, that mother. You're gonna take a bunch of their team. Like, I, I love this idea that, and we're gonna talk about the ACC in five minutes or so. That the ACC is gonna come and get Houston and TCU, and they just signed a grant of rights that's just as stiff as the ACC's grant of rights. Well, what makes you? What do you guys think? You guys are interchangeable? Yeah, and I all think of a the sudden, ACC is the one that's more vulnerable than the Big Twelve, dude. The Big Twelve is incredibly healthy. I mean, and I'm not even yeah. a Big Twelve guy. I, I'm not like I, I don't have. Again, on this show, like this is not like an Oklahoma show or like a Texas show or a TC. Like it's dude, a Notre Dame show. Okay, relax, relax. Okay, we're not doing that. No, I'm not doing that. No, we're, we're not probably, doing that. We're probably okay? not doing we're that. We're not married to any of these conferences. And so when I say my opinion is, is that the Big Twelve continues to find itself in this role of 
you know, disruptor. I yeah. mean, that's what Brett Yormark said in his initial comments as commissioner. He was hired as someone that needed to come in and kind of disrupt the landscape and really bring a new energy to the Big 12 as a conference. And so that's why I say this progression is inevitable. This shouldn't be seen as, oh, my God, the Big 12 should go run and hide in their room. Like, that's not the, the standpoint but for do them. But do you buy, do you believe that the, the Big 10 and the SEC have the power to – Pack 12, the Big 12. I do not. I think this is all posturing for what we talked about yesterday. We broke the news on the show yesterday that the college football playoff is going to have a very different look coming up in 2024 in less than a year. And I think Thanks. when you, you see this meeting um, that is already scheduled for August 30th, so in a week and a day, that's the first meeting of the college football playoff committee. It's not going to get done in that meeting, but I would think by the turn of the year, we're going to have a brand new power structure and a, a brand new, you know, yellow brick road to follow to the college football national championship. And I think the G5 and the, the P5s or the P4s, excuse me, uh, are going to have a, a, a face slapping competition about, hey, how many conference games will it require? Hey, are conference champions getting auto bids? Are the auto bids going away? And I think this right here is the Big Ten in the SEC trying to say, hey, we're the ones in control here. You'll do as we say. To which I say, I don't know where the Big Ten gets the idea that they're in control of anything. For the last decade, you've been a, a two-horse town, dude. That's it, right? It, that's all you've been. The SEC, hey, they carry the water. I totally understand it. You've got national championships left oh, and right. God. Exactly right. Like, you've had the Saban dynasty. Now you've got, you know, the Georgia and the Kirby dynasty. And, like, the SEC has a legitimate claim as the badass in the room. And, I, and they've earned that. But the Big Ten is this conference that thinks they run the world, and they do not. Congratulations on your $100 million, but you might actually want to win something. And while you get into the, the college football playoff every year, and I love this argument from Big Ten fans, we're like, well, we've got multiple teams into the playoff every year. Well, because you're auto-bitted because you play nobody. You, li you quite literally have been two teams for years and years and years. So this is not like you've been this special conference and you've had this unbelievable spread where every one of your teams has had an appearance and you haven't. It's Michigan, and before Michigan, really, it was Ohio State, and now it's Michigan and Ohio State, and now you're going to have to go and pac 12 yourself to get more teams into the college football playoff. So before Jimmy and his khakis get all up on their haunches and stuff, you might want to tell the truth about who you really are. Mm -hmm. You're a two-team conference, and that's the reality of it. And let's not even talk about where you stand in college basketball because the four bros coming in from the Pac-12 don't help you in that category. Thanks. They truly do not. And maybe UCLA can change that a little bit. But let's not sit here and pretend that UCLA has been a world beater and they're contending in the, the, the NCAA tournament because they're not either, right? The Big 12 has earned the respect that if this New York Post story is to be believed that they're being threatened with being Pac-12, they've earned that respect because mm -hmm. that is respect born out of fear from, from the SEC and the Big 10, in my opinion. I think the Big 12 has earned that. Because Brett Yormark is an operator. He is a he is a mover and a shaker. This is hardly the first time the SEC has tried to intimidate the Big Twelve, right? Like let's oh, not let's not. let's not let's not joke around or beat around the bush or or act naive about the idea that the SEC is is trying to I, I, I the way I like to verbalize it is they're just trying to bully people in in the PR room, right? They're just trying to say, Hey, we're gonna use we're gonna sure. as 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 good old Kirk Schultz used to say. The optics in the room need to be a certain type of way if you're the SEC, which is, hey, we've won the most. We got Alabama and Georgia. You guys can all pound sand. And and frankly, I don't necessarily disagree with that strategy if you're Greg Sankey in the SEC. I yeah. get that strategy. But again, if you're Brett, you're Mark. I think the huge win here is, is, is precisely the opposite of what you said with the Big Ten. All the brands you added will help you in, in, in both sports, and you are already uh, a really strong proponent in both sports. And, by the way, all your presidents in the conference, which I think this is a key point, all the presidents in the conference are in alignment on where the conference is going. Can't say that about the, the, the ACC. 
I'm not quite sure you can say it about the Big Ten because there was a lot of hesitation around Oregon and Washington and what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it. And you notice they dragged their feet on that a little bit. And they were, you know, they were a little bit worried about, you know, uh, raiding the Pac-12. It, funny how we went from we're scared to raid the Pac-12 and be seen as conference killers to, yeah, we're going to Pac-12 you. It's remarkable. Anybody notice that shift in, in marketing campaigns? Anybody notice that shift in strategy? Because I certainly have. We went from, yeah, we're going to be nice guy and we're going to lay low. We're not going to be mean publicly anyway. But then we're going to take all your best brands and we're going to kill your conference because you were incompetent and you let it happen, basically. And now we've shifted to, yeah, Brett, you need to watch yourself because, you know, if you get in the way of us making decisions over here, even though you're sitting at the same table... You know, we're well, going to pack 12. And it's like, not even decisions. It's how much money is the Big 12 going to ask for? Like, what are the, the – because all of these conferences want guarantees on some level. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants access. That's that's the bottom line. And, again, to go back to the Pac-12, this is why BYU was such a huge loss for the Pac-12. The decision not to add BYU was a fatal blow here because you want to talk about reach and access – BYU gives you that. You want to talk about reach and access. My belief is that Houston gives you huge reach and access because not only is it a metro market, but it gives you, in my opinion, complete geographic control of Texas, yeah. which is a huge deal. I think UCF gives you a really nice reach into a massive market in Florida. I, I When we talk about reach equaling revenue, who's got more geographic reach than the Big 12 right now? Well, nobody. Now, yeah. a year from now, we could have an argument about the Big Ten because the Big Ten is coast to coast. You add four power brands out of the Pac-12 in addition to the, the, the reach that's already in place in the Big Ten. Okay, now we can have that conversation. But if we're, if we're being really honest, the biggest concern, I think, for the SEC and the Big Ten is that the Big 12 is going to have it in football, and they've already got it in basketball. Yep. And you've already got reach into Mexico, and you've already got reach into New York City in basketball. And I love this for the Big 12. I, I, I think this is, a, this is a huge tip of the cap, and I'm curious what you guys think. Like, where do you come down on this? Get in the comments section now. Um, PXG McCluskey. Let's well, go. Well, well. Let's go. Well, well, well. That's my guy right there. PXG McCluskey. Now, now, Mayor, I need some confirmation. You are a right-handed golfer, right? Like, you're not a lefty? No way. There is no way that he is a right-handed golfer. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know on this show, we are PXG guys through and through. Mm -hmm. I... None of this Callaway nonsense. None a of this. hundo P. Yeah. I'm telling you now. McCluskey is golfing with us up at Canyons. Yep. In Park City. Who, by the way, their seasonal price uh, decrease happened today. $70. Any Utah resident, it's 70 bucks around at Canyons Golf in Park City now. It is unbelievable. Well worth it. Well worth your 70 bucks. Uh, PXG McCluskey is a right handed golfer. Let's I go, like baby. It. I like it. We'll see you this weekend. We are playing uh, Saturday or Saturday at three. Yeah, with Mayor McCluskey up at uh, Canyon. It's going to be amazing. Uh, phenomenal Hebrew. The SEC is three teams: Alabama, Georgia, and LSU. That's about it. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Because one of the interesting things today we're talking about is the over unders, um, win totals mm -hmm. from MGM, and MGM does not agree with you. Yeah, a MGM does does not agree with you well, at I think all. The thing with the SEC is that y you have a situation where, yeah, sure, you can say that they're top heavy. Sure, I mean, but that's every that's that's every conference on the football field. I mean, there isn't a conference that exists where you know. And, and, and sure, if you want to make the the Big Twelve is is pretty solid top to bottom, that's fine. You can do that. But when we're talking about the college football playoff. Every conference is top heavy in terms of the college football playoff. Yeah. But but I think where the SEC separates itself is that is that they have the one off team that can make a ton of noise. Like you look at in the SEC, like LSU is a good example. LSU is college football playoff caliber some years. They are. Like they they are that team that will yeah. make a lot of noise in, in the SEC. But but again, I think that's why this year for Texas, last year in the Big 12, I think it's huge because if Texas is going to come into the SEC and Texas is going to be a big brand, 
that can compete to win the SEC. I'm not saying they're better than Bama and Georgia, but I'm just simply saying if they're going to be in that championship game for the SEC, let's say, on a regular basis, yeah. that's a big deal for the SEC. So, And we haven't even gotten to Oklahoma. So I think when you're looking at odds and you're looking, you're saying, okay, what is what are the, what are the boys in Vegas saying? Like, I think it's kind of crazy when you look at these lines because they clearly say the SEC is strong. Yeah, you look at Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, and Alabama. Georgia's at 11 and a half. Bama, Ohio State, Michigan are at 10 and a half. SC, Florida State, Clemson, Penn State, um, all the way down to Tennessee are at nine and a half. Yeah. And then Notre Dame, we're, we're not winning nine games. Stop. Do you view this season as a failure? Well, don't get me started. But I think you, you, you look at the depth of the SEC. What is Old Miss this year? Because I'm somebody that believes that Lane Train's coming. I think I think Lane Kiffin um, is is not going to toil. I look at Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I think Tennessee is going to have another monster year. I think there is a the the disappointing team in the SEC this year. I think there's a real chance it's Florida mm-hmm. is the is the disappointing team. But what about Jimbo at Texas A and M? And look to your point about you know hey it's Georgia and Bama and LSU. Okay, sure. Historically, over the last three years, yeah, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. I think you look forward, and even just into this year, because I think your point about OU and Texas is exactly right. Mm-hmm. But you look at this year, I think, obviously, Old Miss, Texas A&M, Tennessee, those are huge. But Missouri's got a chance to be a much better football team than they were last year. I think Arkansas, Auburn, you look at the bottom half of the conference is always what defines you. It's not the top three, four teams in your conference that define you. The strength of a conference is built on your on your really bad football teams. Yep. And and obviously your Vandys, your your you know your Mississippi States who are not haven't been relevant for some time. You need those teams to really step up. Can Duke win football games in the ACC? Can Drake May and Carolina win football games in the ACC? Those are huge questions. But if that's the the measure, and I believe that it is, talk to me about the bottom of the Big 12. Yeah. Right? Like, I, I agree Dude. with you that West Virginia is going to be an absolute shit show. I think they are going to – I don't know that West Virginia it wins four games this because year. Because it's garbage. They're going to be terrible. But what do you – like, everybody is counting on this big backslide out of TCU. I think there's no doubt when you lose a talent they lost and you had the wins they had, yeah. you're going to step back. Mm. They're not going to win five games or six games and miss a bowl. Yeah. That, that we were watching a national show today that said, man, TCU is going to have to fight and claw for a bowl berth. And I'm like, do you have any idea what you're talking about? I, I, I look at the Big 12. Sure, is Iowa State going to be a bowl team? I have no idea. Uh, with the gambling scandals and the turmoil, and uh, yeah. Iowa State's in a tough spot, but so is Iowa. Mm-hmm. That's a Big Ten team. You you look at the the Big Twelve. I think Houston can compete. I also heard somebody today say that Dana Holgerson was a, a hot mess at Houston. <laughs> what the hell are what you are talking, you talking about, about, bro? Like his players at Big Twelve football media days raved about Dana Holgerson. Yeah, I, like. I look at this conference. I think the biggest question mark in the Big 12 is going to be Dave Aranda and Baylor. Yeah. Can can Dave Aranda win eight games at Baylor this year? He's a hell of a defensive coordinator. Same thing about Brett Venables uh, at, at, at Oklahoma. Can Brent win eight, nine games this year? If, if Baylor and Oklahoma perform, this conference is going to be the Deep, best football bro. conference in the country. Deep. They, they are. Now, having said that, by the way, on the way out the door... Uh, the Pac-12 is going to be excellent. The Pac-12 is going to be excellent. Oregon State is going to be a handful. Yeah, I can see Cal winning games they shouldn't win. UCLA's not ranked, and maybe they shouldn't be, but boy, Chip Kelly's got athletes, and I, I, I am here to tell you, UCLA's going to win some games you well, don't think they should win. UCLA is the TCU, the Pac-12, right? DTR moved on, yeah. lost some talent there. You would you yeah. would figure a backslide, but we'll see. I think Arizona is going to be difficult. I think, I you know, we'll see what's going on with Arizona State at quarterback, and we can get into that decision next week. But 
I think this conference. And the, how crappy is Colorado going to be? Let's not leave them out. It's a four-win team, man. I know it hurts your heart to say that. But I, I think you're looking at. Washington is arguably the most underrated team in the country. Certainly. That they are ranked 10th. That Utah is ranked 14th. Okay, 14, fine, you have quarterback issues. Totally get it. Totally understand it. 14th? Okay. You have two teams in Washington and in Utah that nobody has shown respect to so far. I look at, at a team like USC, Oregon. I think Oregon at 15. How is Oregon 15? How is Oregon 15? Dan Lanning and I don't know. I think this conference is flying under the radar. I think Oregon State has a chance to be a top 10 team in this it, it, by the time this season's over. Yeah. And I will fight you for that. <laughs> I will fight you for that. That's right. Son baby. of Skeeter. You clearly don't know how uh much about Big 12 and West Virginia is going to make you look so stupid. I hope they do. Yeah. I hope they do. They look horrendous on paper yeah that i mean they look really really bad on paper i i don't know that there's a team that looks worse but going please, into the season please and i'm being serious i'm not even trying to razz you have your crow sandwich ready give it to us hey man listen it, to the show man if west virginia if west virginia goes to a bowl I, I'm not sure what I, I will shave. I will sure. shave Jake Jake's eyebrows if West Virginia goes to a bowl. I will shave Jake's eyebrows on the show. Yeah, that's I mean, not happening, dude. We'll do that's, it. No, it's not. We'll do. No, don't it's don't not, you, dude. Don't you think I won't? You fucking don't. I know I will. I, we're not doing that. Wyatt Earp for four dollars and twenty cents. Wyatt bro. Earp. Uh, what's the over under on month dash year the ACC breaks up? Mm. I don't think the ACC is breaking up inside of 12 months. I, I I don't see it happening this year. I don't think anybody's going anywhere in 2024. Yeah. I, I don't see that happening. John Marzula, new 12-team uh, basketball tournament featuring only Big 12 ACC Big East teams. Taste of their own medicine. Could be. I mean, the SEC is a hell of a basketball conference right now. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to keep them out? Big Ten, eh. But why would you want to keep the, the SEC out of any tournament that you're starting? That would be lunacy. Yeah. That's a really good basketball conference, man. A really good basketball conference. Um, all right, let's get some of your thoughts in here. Uh, too much g uh, gravy for my biscuits. Cal can't pay for wins. No, they can't. No, they can't. Rick Forrester, Houston is a sleeper team. I don't disagree with that. I do not disagree with that at all. Um, too much gravy says prime leg. <laughs> I can get you a toe. I can get you turf toe. We can do that. Uh, Salamini preseason polls are gar garbage. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Um, let's see. Rainy Branson says Chandler Morris will get TCU eight wins max. Eight wins is pretty good. Eight wins is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, if you if you backslide to eight wins, I think you're you're fine, you're fine. Jesus Pinto, six and six Texas, six and six Oklahoma, six and six K State. Texas, I will shave Jake's other eyebrow if Bro, Texas goes six and six. I only have two eyebrows, dog. Like I don't have ten eyebrows, dude. I'm not Anthony Davis. Come on, Do man. Do you guys really believe that there's a chance Texas wins six games? Because the boys in Vegas completely disagree with you. Texas at the at MGM. Texas is at what are they at? Nine and a half is their over over under win total. It's a big twelve. And and uh, again, we have this conversation every year, bro. Look, bro. I know you don't know Big Twelve football. First team, all never win the conference. But Texas hasn't won the the, the Big Twelve in like nine thousand days. <laughs> <laughs> and if you add the seconds and then the milliseconds since Texas won the the Big 12. Hey, guys. I mean, that tells me that West Virginia's winning nine games this year. I mean, it's formulaic, Pythagorean theory and shit. Donnie, you know, like take please. Minutes and seconds since Texas won the Big 12 equals West Virginia national champion. So you have no frame of reference here, Donnie. I mean, that's not me saying that. It's the quadratic equation 
from the Pythagorean thing, or like whatever the geometry shit is. You just it's add it up. Vernal equinox. And Neil Brown's the coach of the year. Look at look the look on the I mean look at the over unders. Can't make this stuff uh, up, bro. Bro. Does anybody really <laughs> believe? Do you really believe? <laughs> oh man, Texas Quinn Ewers. I mean, he is gonna wait. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. How long is good old Quinn Ewers gonna be starting for well, Texas? You know, you worry about guys, 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 guys. <laughs> Come on. Come on, seriously. You guys will like I, I'm amazed. And listen, like here we go, here we go. Team O14. K State, Texas, and OU will be at least nine and three. OU has a very easy schedule. Okay, I can live with that. Yeah, that's doable. But not guy that's like, look. Now I was talking to a friend of mine. Who, Hello, here, man. And, and I'm just saying, I understand he lives in Tarrant County. And he is an SEC guy now, because, you know, the SEC owns Dallas. But he oh, was no. here. Oh, my. I mean, they, they're at the Omni Hotel. Go look. The signs <laughs> are on the wall, dude. He told me Texas is capped at five wins this year in Vegas. And then whatever the boys in Vegas want, Tarrant County gives them. Yeah, next question. Like, that guy, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. Like, I understand. I get it. Quinn Ewers is probably going to sprain some sort of lady parts before the season even starts. Great. Mm -hmm. Should have been starting Manning anyways. That's that's Just all saying. I'm saying. Uh, Domer Wop says flux capacitor. Hey, Domer. Too much gravy says Texas undefeated on being back. They are. They're back again. They're, they're back again. Uh, and donuts. Golf fun for $5. Thank you. Appreciate Simple you, cost of one sugar coffee. Exactly. Do you guys know that I've... In my entire life, I've had cappuccino. I've never had a cup of coffee. Never. And I'm proud and of I that. And I worked at Starbucks. And I'm proud of that. Boyd Lake. Uh, Texas is, quote, stacked every freaking year. Guys, guys, guys. <laughs> you know, I've watched the the, the, the Longhorns. And Look I, them, boy. Now, listen, admittedly, they've disappointed us every year. All hat, no cattle. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, they got some beef up front. This is our year. Some this is, beef up front. This is our, like, I'm telling you, get out the Clorox wipe, get the manure off the boots, and head down to DKR, because this is going to be a year. Sark ain't drunk anymore. We're doing this thing. <laughs> That's cute. I remember when I had my first beer. Probably way too much. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> Rainy Branson, just a friendly banter, though. Exactly. Uh, Monty, I think Washington Huskies will go four and eight this year. Guys, listen. <laughs> Who the f is that guy? Have you checked the rain gauge in Seattle? Bro. Four and eight. <laughs> uh, PXG McCluskey, bro, my sources, bro, tell me. BYU is 18 and 0 this year. <laughs> know your role and shut your mouth. Okay? Know your role. Know your role and shut your mouth. BY freaking you. And they don't drink coffee either, especially not warm coffee. Or cold, is it up there? I don't remember. Iced. I, thank you, sir. No caffeine, please. But you give them a gold can of Coca-Cola, BYU will beat that ass. Stay hard! <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You get, this is all off the top of my head. Uh, Kaufman, uh, bet the under on Texas. They never live up to their expectations. <laughs> okay. Okay, listen. Listen, I'm here yeah. for you guys. The, the, there it is. Yeah. The, the guys at, at MGM, Bet MGM have Texas at nine and a half. Mm -hmm. And the under, if you go under, it's plus 105. Mm -hmm. So that's not a bad number. It's not a bad number. So do it. Do, take, show me how wrong I am. Show me how wrong I am. Dude, I will clean your boots with Jake's shirt what personally. Nat? Let me tell you what, Nat. You know, there's not a chance in the world. And Texas, I I, I will say, okay, let me, um, oh, God, he's going to make excuses now. Fat ass is backtracking, and that's a big track. Hit the damn like button, thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hit the like button and subscribe. Um, <laughs> Texas's schedule is not by any stretch easy. Rice win. win. At Alabama. Loss. Wyoming. Win. At Baylor. Win. Kansas. Win. 
the what are they calling it now? The Red River, Red All State Red River rivalry, right at the Cotton Bowl. Call that a loss just for conversation's sake, <laughs> dude. If Texas loses to Oklahoma now, okay, call it a win. You're right. You're right. Okay, win. So they're one right now. That's it, six games. They're five and one. They're five and one. Only lost to Alabama at Houston. Win. Six and one. BYU. Auto win. Seven and one. Wow. <laughs> Guy, K State in Lost. in Austin. Oh, in Austin. It's at it, it is at DKR. Damn, that's a not win, Manhattan. Dude. Yeah, that's a win. Eight at TCU in Tarrant County, Fort Worth. No, it's not Tarrant. It's Fort Worth. It, TCU, November eleventh. You gotta give them a win. I I just they're better. They should be better. Nine and one. Iowa State ten and one, and then the game of games. Mm. Home for Texas Tech should be a win. The twenty fourth of November. You guys wouldn't know anything about this, would you? DKR Texas Memorial Stadium. I and listen, I don't have a dog in the fight. Man, I want I want Texas Tech to win that game so <laughs> bad. I want it because that that game <clears throat> that game it's a huge game, dude. Massive college football playoff implications, potentially. But I think Texas Tech and Alabama are the two that you could lose. Yeah. Because they're not there there's not a team on that schedule that's and better than Texas. The boys in Vegas have them at nine and a half. Nine and a half. Oh, that's tough, bro. You gotta have balls to go over on that. You because I think ten is the max. I don't think you can go to Tuscaloosa in week two and beat beat Alabama. Because, I mean, they, they took you to the wire, and, and Bryce Young made a hell of a play. But where do you guys come down on that schedule with Texas? With, like, what do you guys, you know. Uh, James Smith, a new member of the show. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, Jimmy Smith. Good to see you. It's James. It's James. It's Jimmy. Uh, Jesus Pinto says, Texas zero, Alabama 56. <laughs> Bryce Martin, y'all shitting on you or is like he wasn't one of the... The dynasty is not over. Uh, One of the top recruits ever coming out of high school. I hate Texas, but this year they're different. Well, y'all shitting on yours. You got to stay. You got to stay healthy. Cougar tracks. Texas never reaches their potential. Nope. Rick Forrester. Houston versus TCU in Houston is going to be a massive game. Yeah. You know. Look, I think it is. And I understand. Texas is always, right? Texas is always overrated. Yeah. Always. Stutterers says they're baiting the over on Texas. Oh, my God. Yes. 100%. Yes. Because what are the chances they go, you know, they're... they're a, a, Dude, 10 a, wins on that schedule is tough, bro. No doubt is. about it. We haven't even gotten to injury stuff yet. I and mean, let's say that they put Manning in. If they're ten and two, dude, with that schedule, yeah, ten and two, because really your only your only gimmies are Rice and Wyoming, and those are in September. Yeah, packaged around Alabama. I mean, that would be you. That would be incredible. You would have to admit at that point that is yeah, that's incredible. You know, uh, Zach Sloter says, thoughts on the White Sox possible relocation? Give me 10 minutes on that, and I'll answer that question. Cyclone fan gives us $10. When do lawsuits start in college football conference changes? They won't. It, it, like, who's going to sue? Because you're in the NCAA, which means you're a member of the NCAA, so you play by their rules. And the what N- exactly are you suing for? Yeah, the NCAA is a nonprofit uh, they have antitrust exemption. You, as a charter member of the uh, NCAA fraternity, you know, you, as a member of the fraternity, I should say, you agree not to litigate. Yeah. I mean, it, you, it's all, we've talked about this almost every day now. It's awfully difficult to do that. Yeah. Kurt Peters with El Nino Winter. Wow. My local weatherman says Colorado's going six and six. Do, do, all, do all of your local weathermen smoke crack or just that one guy? Just, I, I mean, I'm just asking. There's no, if that's pretty guys, much self explanatory. How does it just find me a path 
Buddy said they go six and six. Find me a path. Even in the it, 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 specifically while still in the Pac-12, you find me a path. Pac-10. Where Colorado <laughs> wins six of these games uh, at TCU September second. Nebraska win. You think they're beating Nebraska? Yeah. Okay. There's one win. Colorado State win. Okay. There's two at Oregon loss. USC loss at Arizona State potential win, but probably a loss. Throw it in for three. Stanford that's a potential win. Four at UCLA loss at uh, or home for Oregon State loss home for Arizona loss loss uh, at Washington State win. No, that's a loss uh, at Utah. That's four if I'm. I, that's four if I'm Why giving you, you Arizona think State. That they can't beat Washington State because Washington State's gonna be better than people think. Washington State, I'm t- I, I, I'm just telling you, Washington State is going to be better than people think. And when you look at their, you look at their depth at quarterback, and you look mm. at, okay, I, I know they're gunslinger team, but Prime's team is going to be set up for high scoring games because he knows he can't stop anybody. Well, and the 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 thing that is so impressive about Arizona State is Jaden Rashada is the starting quarterback there. Yeah. He and you remember he is a true freshman and he's a guy that signed at Florida with that massive NIL controversy and <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, dude. There's just not a way, man. Arizona State's a program I'm gonna have to see before I believe. You're gonna have to show I don't me that he's got that. that he's got that dialed in. I don't disagree with that at all. Because that that team is always hype machine and then not the not quite as bad as Texas, certainly, but Arizona State's that team that's like, oh yeah, they're gonna be this is the year, and it's like, no, it never happens. Uh Delaric, Texas will lose to Bama Tech in a random conference game because that's what Texas does. It is because <laughs> Tech wins the conference undefeated or one loss. Dude, Texas Tech. I want it so bad for all my boys in Lubbock. I really, really do. I want it. Because I think if you look at the Texas Tech schedule, and I, I look, I understand it. Texas Tech, their schedule is very winnable. The Oregon game is in Lubbock. You look at, I mean, that Tarleton State game now. Their first road game is at West Virginia. If you don't beat West Virginia by 21, don't come home. Yeah. Don't come home. I agree. I agree. Houston at at home for Houston. That's a win. And then October 7th, we're going to find out. And by then we'll know who Baylor is. But I think that's the first really difficult, hey, who the hell is Texas Tech? Because I think there's a real chance you're beating Oregon. Yeah. Can you go to Baylor and win after you face Tarleton, West Virginia, and Houston? And how healthy will you be coming out of the Houston game? Because they're going to they're going to yes. they're going to feast. They are going to have hors d'oeuvres on your leg bones. Yeah. Like that Houston team is going to be nasty. And then we keep in it real with Kansas State. Then you go to BYU, and trust me, that's a losable game. You're going to, I know. Everybody, well, it's BYU, first year in the conference. It's at altitude. <laughs> it is going to be colder. What's the date on in that Octo- game? October 21st. Yeah, there's potential snow on the ground. It's going to be chilly. Yeah. And it's Lavelle Edwards Stadium, which is going to be jacked. So that's going to be a national game, in my opinion, nighttime. Yeah, Texas BYU should be a national game, no doubt. No uh, T- doubt. And then you go from Texas Tech goes from at BYU, home for TCU, at Kansas. I'm saying 10 is just such a high number, bro. Like that, uh, you're, and, Eight and seems more reasonable. By the way, you also finish with UCF at home and at Texas. I, I, I eight, eight, If TC or excuse me, if Texas Tech... Yeah. If Texas Tech wins nine games, I will personally. No, I'm not going to take a line from the Wolf of Wall Street. Okay, my man. point is, <laughs> put Joey in the Hall of Fame today. Yeah. If that happens, because whoa, dude, that would be that would be really <clears throat> that would be incredible. That would be you win nine games. My God, uh, the Oregon Texas Tech game. Ooh. Uh, that game is, man. Uh, Gary Wolf, not even primetime is going to turn Colorado around that fast. That's what I'm saying. 
Yeah. It's not disparaging and they're just you're how are you going to flip that? I, I they I think they were one one in a one one in 11 last year like they were yeah. they couldn't even compete. And I know he flipped the roster and Shador. Well, I don't think anyone thinks they're going to be an eight-win team. I just think that, you know, they're – like Six I, wins? I, my opinion of Colorado is simply that they're going to make it difficult on you. Whether they win or lose, to me, is totally dependent on who they're playing and how that team handles what they try to do. Because I, I, I honestly think that Prime is that guy that's going to have his guys playing at 110%, even if they suck. Right, like even if you're terrible, you're gonna play at 110. percent I don't disagree. And you're gonna try and be really physical, and you're gonna try and kick the hell out of the other team physically because you know you can't beat them straight up. So yeah, I don't disagree. So the question for me with Prime is simply going to be: Can the defense get him a turnover every single game? Can you get me one turnover every game? Because if you can do that, you have an opportunity at least. Now I don't think they're winning six games. I don't. I think that's incredibly difficult and a lot to ask in year one. Love to see him win four games, though. I think that's a huge improvement if he wins four games. Teddy Wayman says, I believe in prime. And is Louie. Eddie Stoss, CU wins three games. Yeah, right in that window. James L. says, I don't think Texas beats TCU in double OT, but I'm sure cheering for horns down on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the way he did horns down. Oh, James, that's amazing. Uh, Teddy Wayman, Colorado will probably win five, maybe six games this year. My Dude, I'm goodness. telling you, man, that's aggressive. Teddy, my you got goodness. a position on Colorado, or is that just your take? My goodness. Rick Forrester, my priest told me Houston will beat Texas. In God's name, image, and likeness. Dude, I, I you might want to change parish. God bless. And donuts, Colorado three and nine. Their team will be in total disarray. I don't, I don't know about I don't know disarray. About that, dude. He Prime has a really good coaching staff. Yeah, and he's got playmakers. He just, but he's he's he doesn't have a two deep across the board. Yeah, he doesn't have forty four guys. He's probably got thirty five, maybe. And you can't in a conference as difficult as the Pac twelve, man. Uh, winning six games in the Pac-12 is going to be a challenge for even like a Utah. Yeah, they're going to have to fight their way to wins. Mm -hmm. Oregon's going to have to fight their way to six, seven, eight wins. I, I look at USC. Again, I I know everybody's like, oh, bro, totally overrated. Okay, so look at USC real quick. Look at USC. They're a top. I would put them top three team in the country. I think they're that talented. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Where's the first loss come for Great USC? Question. San Jose State, Nevada, Stanford. At Arizona State, at Colorado. Arizona, at Notre Dame. I think they're... Notre Dame. No. Potentially Notre Dame. Is that home or away? That's at Notre Dame. I'm just telling you. You're, you're, you're Notre just... Dame. I... Notre Dame, our mother. Please bless us because Notre Dame's going Notre to I'm not saying Notre Dame's suck. good. I'm I think saying Notre that Dame... that game is, is a huge wild card. Notre Dame's going to be lucky to be a 500 team. What if what if Caleb Williams is out for the season before the Notre Dame game? Oh, shit. I, I... Well, that's my point, though. You don't know. You're deep into the what season, if, What if my dude? mom had never given birth to me? You all would be bored right now. But she did, so you're not, right? I'm a pimp. Pimp's going pimp. And I'm just telling you. Caleb Williams, I'm not going to play the what if he breaks his arm game because I hope it doesn't happen. I hope every player stays healthy because that's, that's, well. that's what we all want. The best players going head to head. Notre Dame doesn't have best players. <laughs> Notre Dame doesn't. Dude, you call yourself a Notre Dame fan and yet you're here as somebody said shitting on them. I'm keeps in it real. <laughs> I'm telling you now, Notre Dame's not good. Um, Utah, they're going to beat Utah. They'll win at Cal. I think their first. I think their first potential losses do not even show up until November. And that's going to be the Washington Huskies coming to the Coliseum in a game I really would like to be at. Uh, and then USC goes and plays the wildly overrated uh, Boza Dick or Bo Nix. My bad. Um, yeah, yeah, I know what time it is. He get confused together, and stuff. You know, and stuff right. um, at Oregon on November 11th. And then they finish with UCLA. Those are their those are their three best chances to lose a game. I think Utah's their fourth best chance. And throw in a crazy road game. Arizona State comes to mind because 
They're going to have a wild quarterback, but I don't see USC losing until maybe November 4th. 